Ephesians right now. And our Bible reading is number 19. Paul did five prison epistles, and this is one of them. This book is so beautiful. Sharon told me that when she was down and out and really going through a lot of trouble, she'd read the whole book of Ephesians over and over and over again. And I have too, at times, the book of Hebrews, the book of Romans, the book of Ephesians. Romans, Colossians, and Ephesians are all like sister letters. I'm going to read this to you, first of all, because it sounds so beautiful to me, maybe not to you, but I know a lot of you out there study Greek with me. And I'm going to read the first two verses from Greek. Paulus Apostolos Christu Isu, Dia Thelamatos, Theu Tois Agios Tois Eusin, and then that is in parenthesis in Ephesus, because it really wasn't written to, this is a, this is a general epistle, a universal epistle, not just to Ephesus, Ephesus where it was copied. Then it says, Kai Pistois and Christu Isu, Caris and man kai reni apotheo, patros and man kai kirio esu Christu. Logetos hotheos kai pater tu kirio emon esu Christu. Ho ilogesos emos en pasen ilogea pneumatike en tois uparanos en Christu. Kathos, Exelestato, Hemes, and Atu, Pro Carveles, Cosmo, and A Himas, Hagios, Kai, O Momos, Kata, and Nopion, Atu, and Agape, Pro Risios, Himas, Ace, Weothesia, Di Thelematos, Prisu, Ace, Auton, Kata, Tain, Eudokios. Tu thelematos auto eis epino doxes teis caraitos auto eis epicaraitos emas to agape emino. In o eucomen teis apolitrion dia tu haimatos Auto te afezen tu paraptokes man kara teis plusos en karitos etu heis maton kaito plusos e kratos auto heis uparesen eis emas en passe sophia kai bonese no serious Hemon to misterion tu thelamatos auto karate eudokia auto en protheto en auto. I read a little bit more than what I wanted to, but there's some beautiful Greek words in there that I wanted to go over a little bit as we read this book. The Temple of Diana was not very far from Ephesus, actually where the people were and uh, the Apostle Paul came into this pagan community and basically brought them to Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit and in God's Word. Let's start out here now. Paul, an Apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. The word will there is thelematos. That's spiritual activating force. By the spiritual activating force of God to the saints who are at wherever. Right here at Discover the Word Missionary Baptist Church. Wherever you are, that's where they are. Whatever sound church you're in, they are, God is with you and this letter is to you. And the saints who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you, Karini Hirani. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then where this word is Eulogoses. And that means everything good. 
Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In heavenly places, God takes us, when we read this letter, God takes us to heaven. He takes us to heaven. A trip to heaven we get to go. My great-grandmother, when I was very young, we were extremely poor. My grandmother and grandfather bought an acre of ground in East Bakersfield, east of Bakersfield, actually. It wasn't in Bakersfield. And my great-grandmother lived in a trailer house out in front, and they had little trailer houses all over. It was an Indian village is what it was. And we lived in a little uh, shack with a tarp for a door, a, a, a dirt floor that my grandmother used to throw water on and sweep it out, make it hard like a brick. Little old woods burning stove in there, a little airtight stove, you know what that is? All it is is sheet metal, blue, like a gun barrel. And that's what we cooked on, that's what we kept warm with, mostly cooked. My grandmother, when we get ready to go someplace, she'd say she'd run out there real quick, put her apron on over her old dirty dress, put that apron on, come out there, and she said, "Where are you guys going? Can I go?" She wanted to go see something. She was lonely. She wanted to go see something. My mother never wanted to take her, but my grandmother would say, "Let's go. Come on, mom. Come on, Grams. Let's go." And so she gets to see something. God is going to take us to heaven right now. We're going to get to go to heaven. This book is a letter right out of heaven. Just as he picked us out in him. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Before him that means down in the presence of him. Of course we're always down in the presence of God because he's omniscient and omnipresent, isn't he? And he predestined us to adoption as sons. That word there, he, he earmarked us, he branded us. Now, some of the um, hyper-Calvinists really take off on this letter, because this is really good for that. But yes, in eternity past, before God ever created anything, in John 1 and 1, that goes way back there. Genesis 1 and 1 doesn't go back that far. But John 1 and 1 goes back there in our and Logos. In the beginning, kept on being the Word, the Jehovah. And Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead. Because, or yes, even because Jehovah kept on being God. Way back in that period of time where only God existed, God laid out a plan, and He knew your name, Marilyn, and Sharon, and all of you out there. All over, Nancy. In Pennsylvania, he knew your name. Steve and Kathy in Missouri, all of you, he knew your name in eternity past. Donald Grewar, all the way over there in, in Wales, in the United Kingdom, he knew you. All of you down in the Philippines, Solomon Islands, that listened to these messages. Australia. God knew your names. Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. And he predestined us. He marked us off. He earmarked us. He branded us to adoption as son. We'll see Through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will of his stilamato spiritual activating force. Why did God love you? Why did he mark us out? Because he wanted to share a whole universe that he had made with us. And which he will with you someday. It's a promise now, but he's going to do it. To the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. The Lord Jesus Christ is the, is the mediator of all things. By the merits of Jesus Christ, he will redeem the whole world back to himself. Because of the merits of what Jesus did in his life and on the cross at Calvary. He died for our sins and was raised for our justification. In him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness and the, of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And it, it takes some people. It takes the riches of his grace to get us to heaven. 
Absolutely. Which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, and he made known to us the mysterion, the secret of his will according to his kind intention, which he has purposed in him. In reference to an administration suitable to the fullness of time, God's eternal purpose. Like Galatians 4 and 4, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, that he might redeem those that were under the curse of the law. The fullness of times that had in the stumbling up of all things in Christ Jesus, things in heaven and things upon the earth in him. Because of mankind, mankind sold out in the garden. Because of that, the earth has suffered up until this time right now. But one day, the Lord is going to bring it back in his possession by his merits and by his redemption. For God so loved the world, the whole cosmos, he's going to redeem it all back to himself. Every piece of dirt. Not all individuals will be redeemed because they don't want to be. They don't want to be now, but they will want to be sometime. I can assure you that every atheist will be a believer one second after they die, but it's too late. Also, we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose who works all things after the counsel of his own thelemato, spiritual activating force. To the end that we were the first to hope in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him also, in him you also, after listening to the message of truth of the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you were sealed in him with a Holy Spirit of promise. That is a, you know when God puts his Holy Spirit in you, his whole existence, he stakes his whole existence upon you. If he didn't redeem you back to himself, God would cease to exist. That's how sure your salvation is. That's, an un, that's what we call earnest money. You put down earnest money and you lose it if you don't redeem it. God can't lose his Holy Spirit. If he lost his Holy Spirit, he wouldn't be existent. Who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession and the praise of his glory. For this reason I too, having heard the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which exist among you and your love for all the saints, I do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom, actually the spirit of wisdom, there is no indefinite article in Greek, that she'll give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. This is the book. This is the revelation right here. This is it. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, which are in riches of his glory and in, in the inheritance of the saints. What is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe these are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might which he brought about in Christ. It took a lot of uh, uh, power to bring you to the Lord. A lot of might. And it takes you a lot of might to keep you in the Lord. And he brought us about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. See, we're in heaven now. It's talking about heavenly things. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion in every name that is named, not only in the age, but also in the one to come. His, his name is above all names, Jesus is. And he put all things and subjected under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Verse number, or chapter number two now. You were her dead in your trespasses and sins, 
in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now is energizing the sons of disobedience. Boy, we see a lot of that in America today, don't we? Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as those remaining there. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins and our transgressions, has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. By grace you are having been saved. And raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are there in God's heart in heaven. We're taking a trip today. In order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For in grace you are having been saved through faith and that not as of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works that one should boast about them. Faith didn't come from you people. I, I, I get disgusted with these faith healers. Well, you didn't have enough faith. Faith doesn't come from us. You don't muster it up. It is a gift of God. You have the faith to believe and trust in Jesus Christ. That's a gift. Faith is a gift. For we are his handy, handmanship, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works for which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore remember, you formerly the Gentiles in the flesh, and every one of us here are Gentiles, aren't we? Gentiles in the flesh are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision which is performed in flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants and the promise and having no hope without God, godless in this world. I mean, whatever people worship as God is godless. They are godless. They don't have a God. If you don't worship the God of heaven, you don't have one. Mormons, you don't have a God. Jehovah's Witnesses, you don't have a God. Islam, you don't have a God. Catholicism, you don't have a God. God was in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, you were formerly, were far off, had been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made us both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. There was a dividing wall in Jerusalem in that temple area. The Gentiles could not go beyond in pain of death. But there's no wall now, people. The wall is gone. <clears throat> By abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments, contained in ordinance that he himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace between all men. There's nothing between, there's no difference between a white man and a black man, a yellow man and a red man. We're all one. Jesus Christ died for us all. We're all on equal ground. <clears throat> Verse number 16, might reconcile both into one body, to God, to the cross, by it having put to death the enmity, the hatred between races. And he came and preached peace unto you who are far away, and peace to those who are near. Many times the peace, those that were far away heard and listened and obeyed more than those that were near. The near ones there, the Jews. For to whom we have both our access into one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens and with the saints and are of God's own household, his own family. Saints means one uh, not of earth. It comes from ah, alpha, negative, and gay, not of earth. When we're born again, we're born for above, we're, we're born into heavenly things. 
not earthly. Having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, the foundation, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple, a holy dwelling place in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. In his Shekinah glory, God is dwelling with us. Chapter number three now. Paul talks about his stewardship and our stewardship. For because of this and for this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles. Paul was a prisoner. This is one of the prison epistles. He didn't do anything bad. He didn't rob anybody. He hadn't killed anybody. He hadn't stolen anything. If indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace which was given to me for you. Stewardship. Steward, that means you're over something. Every church of the Lord Jesus Christ is over the area where you are. You are to be an example to that area. You are to be, you are a steward of those people in your area. However in the work, whatever you can do. That by revelation the door is made known to me a mystery, as I wrote beforehand in brief. And referring to this, when you read and understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, the secrets of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of mankind, in other words, to the Gentiles, as it were now being revealed in his holy apostles, prophets in the Spirit, or through the Spirit, and in the agency of the Spirit, to be specific that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of this body, and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, of which was made a minister, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his, the energizing of his power. If you ever want to do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ, it's Christ working in you through you, energizing you. He's your battery, he's your electricity, he's your energy. Energizer. To me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles an unfathomable, unsearchable, untrackable riches of Christ. That word there means you can't track it out. By no human means can you track the riches of Christ. It's foreign to this world. It's a track that is invisible to the world and to the world of religion. You know, I was a coon hunter and a lion tracker and a bear hunter and all of that, bobcats, all of that, when I was young. And I could go, when I still walk out, I'm looking at the ground all the time out around Maryland. Even when I'm driving down the road, I'm looking for tracks. I just That's in me. I can't track the riches, the unfathomable, untrackable riches of Christ except through His Word. And God's taking us on that little trip to heaven today in his heavenly words and heavenly things and heavenly thoughts. And to bring light what is the administration of the mystery of the secret which for ages had been hidden in God and created, who created all things, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. <clears throat> Churches ought to affect government. We got so many false churches out there today that churches are affecting the government in a wrong way in many places. Churches obey the law of the land. Churches are made up of people. They are good citizens of the community wherever they are. They are good neighbors, wherever they are. They are good mothers, they are good fathers, and they are good children, wherever they are. Children also have a responsibility to obey their mothers and fathers, it says. 
because they are also have an administration given to them through Christ Jesus and many children are saved they come to the knowledge of Christ and when they do they need to follow the Lord this was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord God's eternal purpose we could preach this whole chart on that from eternity to eternity on Ephesians 3 and 11 in whom we have boldness and confidence and access through faith in him. Therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf, for that they are for your glory. Because of this and for this reason I bow my knees before the Father. I'm getting down and I'm going to pray. I'm going to be thankful. From whom every family in heaven upon the earth derives its name that we would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. I used to watch it, Brother Carl Farrar, Dr. Farrar, that's California Missionary Baptist Institute where I went for 12 years basically. I prayed for him, I saw him suffer. I saw Martin Kahneman suffer. Dr. Martin Van Buren Canavan, a great man of God. I saw him suffer with heart condition for years and finally die. A young man still. Had so much knowledge to be imparted. But he's out there on the website, people. You can go listen to him in Western Civilization and, and many classes on there. A great man of God. And he's still preaching, though he's dead for 40 years. We are strengthened by our brethren by what they have done and the examples they give to us. Strengthened with power through His Spirit in the inner man, <clears throat> so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love. That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the height, and the depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us the energizing power the energy that works within us to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Yon, Tony, on, Tony, on, amen. Absolutely. Amen means so be it. It means I'm going to stand by it. Number four. Chapter number four. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling with which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, patience, for, uh, showing forbearing to one another in love being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are also called in one hope of your calling. So many times churches get on the outs with each other. John really preached to his message, love one another, love one another, love one another, and Paul's telling this church, love one another, love one another, and love is one of the gifts of the Spirit, isn't it? There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God, one Father of all, who is over all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, that he led captivity and host of captives, that he gave gifts unto men. Now this expression... He ascended. What does that mean except that he also had us descended into the lower parts of the earth? Down below the earth, down under the earth, below it. And he who descended as he himself also who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work and the service to the building up of the body of Christ. Uh, 
until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the statue which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there to and fro, there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the craftiness and deceitful scheming. That word method, methods there, deceitful methods. Churches, the Mormon church will say, look how wonderful we can make your family. Look at all these children and all these families. Look how, well, how an example we are to communities. But what God do they have? Every man is a God according to their theology. We have one God, one Father, one Lord Jesus Christ, one Lord, one baptism, one faith. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects unto him who is the head of even, who is the head of even Christ. He's the head of all things. For whom the body, the whole body, being fitted and together by that which every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. I guarantee you can have a car out there. You can have the most beautiful 55 Chevy out there sitting in your yard just totally better than as if it was when it came out the factory. If it doesn't have a distributor in it, it won't run. It won't run. God is our distributor. He is the one that energizes us. Christian walk. The Lord tells us what we're supposed to walk like. This I say therefore and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles who walk in the futility of their mind. Being darkened in their understanding and excluded from the life of God for the cause of ignorance, that is, them because of the hardness of their heart. They having become calloused have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity and greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you are heard of him, you have been taught in him and just as in truth is in Jesus Christ, in Jesus that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance to the lust of deceit, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new self, the new person, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness and the truth, Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak the truth, each one to another, with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. Be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Make amends before the sun goes down. A man and wife, don't go to bed angry. Kiss and make up before you go to sleep. That's what it says. Do not grieve the do not give the devil an opportunity at all. Let him who steals steal no longer, but rather let him be labor performing with his own hands that which is good, in order that he may have something to share with him who has not, or is in need. A thief, it's awful hard to get a thief to tithe. You know that? It's awful hard to get a thief to tithe in a church, a former thief. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification. According to the need of the moment, that it may give grace to those who hear it. Foul language and, and coarse speech should not proceed from your mouth. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption unto the day and beyond in redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ Jesus also has forgiven you. 
The hardest thing to do in the world is to get along with saved people in churches. One of the hardest things you do is a child of God. Is that right, Marilyn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have to learn to do that. Five. Imitators of God. Mimic God. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us as an offering a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But do not let immorality or impurity or greed even be named among you as is proper among saints. There must be no filthiness and, and silly talk and coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of things. So, you know the world, especially... <clears throat> get a drink. The world especially is fond of coarse language. Vulgar language, isn't it? Among women, they have, they have coarse language at times. And men, it seems like that's all they do. Their vocabulary, 95% of it is vulgarity. <clears throat> you know when I saved... I, I really, <laughs> I had some bad language when I was young. I learned that. When I was less than two years old, I could talk pretty well. I just didn't do much of it. But one time uh, <clears throat> I woke up in my little old crib. I was probably between one and two. And blood was all over me. I had a bloody nose and blood was everywhere. Now, I was raised up with a bunch of drunk Indians cussing each other and, and shooting at each other and, and cutting each other with knives. That's what I was raised with. And it was rough, and they called each other everything bad. I listened to all of that and didn't say a word. But you know what? I knew the words. I knew those words. I woke up in my crib covered with blood. My grandmother, my mother thought one of my drunk uncles or somebody had cut my throat. She came over to visit me. I, I lived with my grandmother. And I had a little old crib there that, that I was in. It was just covered with blood. My grandmother was ironing clothes and washing clothes on the scrub board and, and above, over a fire in the yard. And I was there in the house and my mother wasn't there to look at me. And here I was as bloody as all get out. So they, they loaded me up and took me to Kern General Hospital. And they were trying to get blood out of me. I don't know why they wanted more blood, because I lost enough already, but they were trying to get blood out of me. They poked me in the arm, poked me in the finger. They poked me all over the place. I was screaming and hollering and cussing them with all of those words that I heard from my uncles and aunts' mouths. My mother was very, very embarrassed. They wrapped me up a sheet in a sheet. They took me from room to room. Well, let's see if this guy can do it. This woman can get blood out of this kid. Finally, they wrapped me up in a... And every time they took me from room to room, they gave me cereal. I didn't know what cereal was. They gave me Kellogg's Corn Flakes. They gave me Cheerios, all this kind of stuff. They gave me all these little boxes of cereal. And this was probably about 1948 or 49, somewhere around there. 48, probably. And that was brand new. I didn't see anything. I sure didn't get any radio to listen to or no television. I didn't see any commercials or anything. But they gave me these boxes of cereal. They said, here, Jimmy, here, Jimmy, here, Jimmy, you'll be all right. All the time I'm thinking they're killing me. This is some kind of terrible torture they're putting me through. I didn't understand this at all. I kept cussing them. And my mother said, I don't know where he learned that at all. I didn't know he could even talk. She didn't know I could talk. She never talked to me. <laughs> well, that kind of language. For this you know with certainty that no immoral, no impure persons or covetous man or idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Those that aren't persuaded there. Therefore do not be partakers with them. And you who are formerly darkness, 
but now are light. In the Lord walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light and consists of all goodness and righteousness and in truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. That's this book. This is our instruction manual coming right out of heaven. God's just taking us up there and letting us see him and his golden words right now. Do not participate in unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret and open. We live in a country today where good is bad and bad is good. Don't we? That's what they're trying to cram down our throats right now. Good is bad and, and, and bad is good. Never in the history of the world did I ever see a, a convict, a lifetime criminal made into a saint as we have this last year. I never heard of such a thing. Never dreamed of such a thing. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light and everything that becomes visible is light. Why did, why did Cain kill Abel? Because his deeds were deeds of righteousness. He couldn't stand it. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish and understand the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for this is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, <clears throat> I had two uncles that were absolute lifetime winos, alcoholics. The last thing they thought about when they went to bed was they drank the last drop of wine and they passed out. They woke up with their pants all wet and everything, and they weren't worrying about that. They were worried about the next drink of wine. I saw my uncle run a knife all the way to a man over vanilla extract, because it had alcohol in it. He was drinking his vanilla extract in his house, slipped into his house. He came in there and he grabbed a butcher knife and ran it to him. They have a drink mouthwash, anything had alcohol in it. They drank it. Striving for that. Don't desire alcohol and drugs. But as someone that desires alcohol and all and drugs, desire the Word of God. Let Jesus be the last thought of your day and the first thought of your morning. The speaking with one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, and always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in fear of Christ. Married. Marriage. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. I treat them as if they were gods. I know it's hard to do that. It is real hard to do that, isn't it? You know, Sarah called Abraham Lord Master. She was honorary, wasn't she? Sarah means contentious and angry and, and uh, uh, to fight. But she was supposed to be subject to her husband. And husbands is the head of the wife as Christ is also the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. But just as Christ is subject to the but as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. <clears throat> that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word. That he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but she should be holy and blameless. That's the way you're supposed to groom your wives. Groom them to that. Love them to that. Now, I'm telling you, as a realistic in this world, sometimes when people get married, they're not mates. They're not friends. They become enemies and stay that way. There was an old saying one time, don't marry the woman you love. Do not marry the woman you love. Marry the woman that loves you. 
If you don't do that, you got problems. And women, don't marry the man you love, but marry the one that loves you. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies, and he who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Just as Christ also does the church because we are members of his body. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a mystery. This is a secret. <clears throat> but I am speaking with you in reference to Christ and the church. Never let, let each individual among you love his own wife even as himself, and let the wife see to it that she respects and loves and honors her husband. <clears throat> Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for well, this is right. A lot of times, children in this world, I, I was in the bus ministry in the first pastorate that I had, and I went out and I went into homes. And I'm going to tell you what, mamas and daddies were not honorable. But we taught those children to know the Lord. It's awful hard to teach a child that, that God loves you when mama doesn't love you and daddy doesn't love you. It's awful hard to teach them that. It's awful hard to teach them how to trust you and trust God when they could never trust their mothers and fathers. Moms and daddies, be honorable. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. That's what the promise, so you may live long in the land, you know. That it may be well with you and that you can live long on the earth. And Father, do not provoke your children anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, be obedient to your, those who are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and in sincerity of your heart, not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. When you do anything, wherever you work for, work for as if you were working for God. Be a carpenter with all your might, be a plumber with all your might, be a cement layer, a brick mason, whatever you do, a lawyer, a judge, a mother, a father, a secretary, a appliance man, I have one friend of mine, like my own son, that is one of the best appliance men in the, in, in the country. He knows what he's doing. He goes in and he figures anything wrong in your house, electrically or plumbing or whatever needs to be done, he can do it. And he takes great pride in it. When he finishes that house, it's done right. You don't have to worry about it. I had some work done on my house here a while back and I said, send Bill. They said, we can't send Bill. I said, send Bill, you won't have no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> send Bill. He didn't send Bill. Phil finally came, but it was after a disaster. If he'd been here the first time, the work would have been done right. With goodwill, render service as to the Lord and not to men. Whatever your line of work in this world is, do it as if it's you're doing it for God Himself. Boy, if workers would work like that and bosses would treat their servants like this, we'd have a wonderful world, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Knowing that whatever good thing each one does, this is he will receive back from the Lord whether slave or free. And Master, do not the same things to them, but give up threatening, knowing that both their masters and yours in heaven, and there is no partiality with God, no partiality in Him. You treat your workers as if you were treating God, God's children. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His mind. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes, of the methods of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against powers and against world forces and this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Paul's Paul's taking us to heaven now. We've got a little trip to heaven. We're seeing what's going on around us down here looking down on the earth. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist the devil 
in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded on your loins with the truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to stand and extinguish all the fiery darts, the arrows of the evil one. The fiery arrows of the evil one. The shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. <clears throat> That's what we're studying in the Word. With all prayer and prayer, petition and pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Pray on my behalf and utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery, the secrets of the gospel which I am an ambassador, in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We live in a world today where your speech is monitored, where everything you say can be used against you, and will be. Paul said it was so in his day. He said, pray that I'll still have boldness of speech. But that you also may know about my circumstances, how I am doing, Tychius, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make everything known to you. And I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know about us, and that it may comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Base grace be to all of you those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Love incorruptible, love unstained. To the world, love is something that is used. Something that's used. So many men love women that can't be loved. So many women love men that can't be loved in the world. They use love as a tool. And yet love, incorruptible, is not a tool. Love is something you lavish upon those that you love because you love them. Like the old adage says, don't marry the woman that you love, marry the woman that loves you. Wonderful thing. A man one time was married to this woman, and he married her, and, and they'd been married for many years. And they said, did you love your life, wife when, when you married? And he said, no, not really. I didn't love her. She loved me. All of a sudden, I just woke up one day and I realized how much I loved her. That's something, isn't it? Love uncorruptible, incorruptible. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor, for your glory. And touch your children with it. Touch those that don't know you with it. And Father, I know that your word will not return unto you void. So let it take its speed, God's speed with it. Please forgive me where I fail you. Touch the, starts, the hearts of my children all over. Those you've given to me, entrusted to me to teach and to love. In Jesus.